All right, so we've learned about taking points in a table of values and graphing them. And we've also taken a graph with points and filled out a table of values. What we're going to do in this video is learn how to graph a linear equation. Now, how are we going to graph an equation? Well, what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the linear equation and we're going to use it to fill out a table of values. And then from that table of values, we're going to graph that. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go from the equation. We're going to fill out a table of values. And then from the table of values, we are going to graph those points. And we've already learned that second step. So really all we have to do is learn how to go from an equation and fill out a table of values. And it's really not that difficult. So here's the equation that I'm going to be working on for this example, but it can be really any linear equation. The equation is y is equal to 2x minus 1. And from this, I need to fill out our chart. Again, our x values are on the left side, our y values on the, are on the right, and the corresponding pairs the pairs of numbers are going to make up our points on the graph. Now, how are we going to fill this out? Well, what we're going to do is we're actually going to take x values, plug it in for x in our equation, and when we do our calculation, we're going to get y is equal to something, and that's going to give us our y value. Now, the question really is, what x values are we going to plug in for x? Well, in this case, usually we can choose whatever x values we want. We can just plug in an x value and see the corresponding y value. But usually it makes sense to pick smaller, easy numbers for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose some nice, easy numbers. And I'm going to choose a lot of the numbers that we've kind of already seen before. So for my x values, I'm going to use 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. Again, I just chose those. We could have chose different numbers. We could have chose 70, 75, 100, 1000. But why not keep things nice and simple? So I'm going to use simple numbers. I also know that these x values are going to show up on a basic graph. So it's going to be really easy to plot. Now I just have to find the corresponding y values. How do I do that? Well, I have to plug in these x values one at a time into the equation. And first, I'm going to start with at x equals 0. So when I show my work, I'm going to start off by saying at x equals 0. This is just going to make my calculations really obvious. So if someone's going to read them, they know what I'm doing. It's like a little heading. So what I'm saying is I'm going to plug in 0 for x pretty much at x equals 0. Again, I chose these x values. So what you're going to do is you're going to start with your original equation. right? This is the equation we have to graph. I'm not making it up. This was something that was given to us. And I'm going to plug in x equals 0. So I'm just plugging in 0 for x. Everything else stays the same. So instead of x, I have 0, and it looks like this. So instead of 2x minus 1, I now have 2 times 0 minus 1. Well, we can simplify this a little bit. So I have y is equal to, what's 2 times 0? That's just 0, and we still have this minus 1. And then we have y is equal to 0 minus 1. That's actually negative 1 because we're at 0 and we're taking away one more to become negative. So what does this mean? This means that x is equal to 0. For this equation, y is always going to be negative 1. It's not going to be any other value. It's always negative 1. So I can actually put that in my table of values. At x equals 0, 
y is negative 1. Now one thing I want to point out is if we had a different equation, let's say we had y is equal to 5x plus 10, then the y value at x equals 0 might not be negative 1. It might be something else. But for this equation, whenever you have x is equal to 0, y has to be negative 1. So that's the first pair in our chart. Now I've got to keep on filling this out. So instead of at x equals 0, I now have to do at x equals 1. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to start with my equation. y is equal to 2x minus 1. And now I need to plug in my value for x. What's my value for x? Well, it's 1, because I'm saying add x equals 1. That's what we have to find next. That's another good reason to have that heading there, because it tells you what you're actually plugging in. And now we're doing our calculations. 2 times 1 is 2, and then we still have that minus 1. And we have our final answer, y is equal to 2 minus 1 is 1. So at x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. And I'm going to put that in my chart. When x is 1, y is 1. Now we have to do it for the next one, at x equals 2. So at x equals 2, we have our equation. I'm plugging in 2 for x. And now I can simplify. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 3. And now we have to do x equals 3 and find the corresponding y value. So at x is equal to 3, we plug in 3 for x. And now we can solve. So 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1. Again, even, you might not be thinking about this, but we're still doing bed mass. We're doing that multiplication, 2 times 3, before doing that subtraction. So we still have to follow the bed mass order. If you're used to the American system, it's PEMDAS. So bed mass is Canadian, PEMDAS, or PED mass is American. And 6 minus 1 is... Five. So at x equals 3, the corresponding y value is 5. Now we're going to do our final one. We need to know the y value when x is equal to 4. So at x is equal to 4, start with our general equation. Plug in 4 for x. And now we can do the calculations. 2 times 4 is 8 minus 1. And then 8 minus 1 is 7. So now you'll notice we have filled out this table of values from our equation. All we do is we took, we made some basic values for x, plugged it in for x in the equation, and out spat our y values, and this is nicely filled out. Now, what was the point of doing this? Well, we want to graph our equation, and this was just a way for us to do it. So now we can take these table of values and actually put them onto a graph. So this graph is this equation put onto the graph. Now, it's not just limited to five points because we could have gone, okay, what's the value at x is equal to 5? And then we can find that y value, and we can continue with these points. We can say, okay, what's the y value when x is equal to 6? And then we would have another point. So this goes on forever. 
Um, and what we can tell is this is a straight line when we graphed it, so I know this is a linear relation.